dear learners today we will be discussing on the economic participation of women with increased global attention on leaving no one behind in the process of development it is right time to look into the contribution of women towards development and also to think about what share of the benefits of development have reached the women in different social and economic strata across the globe women account for 57% of world's extreme poor in general there has been a lack of inclusiveness in social political and economic development of nations women have been excluded from the political power structures which have resulted in inequitable sharing of resources the ideology of division of labor forces have confined women to the private sphere of life and restricted them to the very existence within domestic roles as wives and mothers so let us first discuss about the gender divide what are the reasons for the gender divide and how it happens male hegemony prevails in the decision making process in the private as well as public sectors in many developing countries there is a gendered divide between the public and private for instance masculinity is associated with public worldly space and femininity with the private domestic realm prevailing gendered notions of acceptable social behavior where chastity and modernity are privileged as markers of good womanhood then complying with the perceptions of good behavior translates as confining oneself to the domestic realm desisting from association with men outside the prescribed kin group and especially ensuring that one is not implicated in any activity that may be scripted as immodest and therefore immoral though women enter the public sphere and actively participate in it as has been in several nationalist struggles they frequently retreat into the more secluded private sphere either because the state and law forces them to do so or because patriarchal ideology in society reasserts itself for example in iran the modern secular elite women of the mid 20th century was transformed by the islamic revolution into the modern militant woman women's em employment came to be confined to those professions which were seen to be feminine in nature for example in teaching and nursing Another example is uh, in North Bihar the participation of women in the freedom movement in 1930s was widespread but in 1989 a kind of political parda had come into being so that women experienced and participated in local politics through a system outside the electoral arena the globalization of the economy has exerted different types of impacts on the indian women at different levels with differences of inter intensity all the routes to access to resources for women particularly poor women have been closed as the market driven approach has taken away all the common resources the enhancement of the overall empowerment of women to draw women into public space could be achieved through localization of the political process now let us look at the global gender gap report measures the size of the gender inequality gap in four areas one is the economic participation and opportunity which takes into consideration outcomes on salaries participation level and access to high skilled employment the second one is educational attainment which takes into consideration outcomes on access to basic and higher level education the third one is 
political empowerment. It takes into consideration outcomes on representation in decision making structures. And the fourth one is health and survival, which takes into consideration outcomes of life expectancy and sex ratio. Thus, the four parameters include economic parameter, the educational parameter, political parameter and the fourth one is the health parameter. The global uh, distance completed to parity in 2021 is 67.7% compared to 68.6% in 2020. This means that the remaining gap to close stands at 32.3%. The gender gap in political empowerment remains the largest of the four gaps tracked with only 22%. Across the 156 countries covered by the index, women represent only 26.1% of around 35,000 parliament seats and just 22.6% of over 3,400 ministers worldwide. In 81 countries, there has never been a, a woman head of the state as of 15th January 2021. The gender gap in economic participation and opportunity remains the second largest of the four key gaps with only 58% of this gap closed so far. Gender gaps in educational attainment and health and survival are nearly closed. In educational attainment, 95% of this gender gap has been closed globally with 37 countries already at parity. Iceland is the most gender equal country in the world for the 12th time this year. The top 10 countries include Iceland, Finland, Norway, New Zealand, Sweden, Namibia, Rwanda, Lithuania, Ireland and Switzerland. There are significant disparities across and within various geographies. Western Europe for instance remains the region that has progressed the most towards gender parity that is 77.6% and is further progressing every year. North America is the second most advanced with 76.4% followed by Latin America and the Caribbean 71.2% and Eastern Europe and Central Asia 71.1%. East Asia and Pacific region 68.9%, Sub-Saharan Africa 67.2% and South Asia 62.3%. The Middle East and North African regions remain the area with the largest gap with only 60.9% of the gap closed. With a score of 0.625, India, India ranked 140th in the Global Gender Gap Index ranking. The, looking at the four parameters, in economic participation and opportunity, India ranked 151 with a score of 0.326 while the global average was 0.583 which means that India lags behind in economic participation and opportunity. In educational attainment, India ranked 114th with a score of 0.962 and the global average is 0 0.950 which means that India is slightly above average in terms of educational attainment. In health and survival, India ranks 155 with a score of 0 0.937 whereas the global average is 0 0.957. Here again, India lags behind in health and survival. In political empowerment, India ranks 51st with a score of 0 0.276 while the global average is 0 0.218 which shows that India is slightly above the global average which again is very low. Now looking at some of the trends and evidences of uh, the economic empowerment or um, economic uh, contribution of women in, this, uh, in development. 
As per the report of the Secretary General of United Nations on Women and Development in 2019, women typically uh, work fewer hours than men in paid employment, but when paid work and unpaid care and domestic work are taken into account, they work more hours than men overall. For example, in countries of OECD, that is Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, women spend 2.6 times more of their time on unpaid care and domestic work per day than men, whereas they spend 0.7 times the amount of time on paid work each day than men spend. Secondly, the disproportionate number of women are in informal employment in Sub-Saharan Africa, Latin America and the Caribbean and in most low and lower middle income countries. Although globally, rates of informal employment are higher for men than for women, that is 63% compared to 58.1% in women. The proportion of women in informal employment exceeds that of men in larger number of countries, that is 55.5% of the countries. Technology and automation are changing the employment landscape both in developed and developing countries. However, despite significant in, uh, investment being made in mobile platforms and some prominent success stories in digitalization of payments and transfers, Access to mobile telecommunication services is unequal and women face barriers to accessing and using digital platforms and financial services even today. Now let us look at some of the uh, drivers and constraints that women face uh, in their participation in economic development. Firstly, the global economic growth rates have been declining since 2008 global recession. Many developing and emerging economies continue to experience declining growth of gross domestic product. When growth slows, job creation slows with it and women's unemployment rates are typically risen. Secondly, the discriminatory laws and gender norms continue to hinder women's full and equal participation in economies worldwide. Formal and informal laws and attitudes and practices that restrict women's and girls' access to justice and employment opportunities greatly constrain women's and girls' ability to participate in the economy and to exercise their human rights. Thirdly, the gender pay gaps are persisting and appear to be widening in some parts of the world. Although the gap appears to have narrowed over the past decade in South Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa and East Asia and the Pacific, it is broadening in uh, some other regions like Europe, Central Asia, Latin America and the Caribbean. The gender pay gap stands at less than 10% in East Asia and the Pacific, while the widest gaps are in South Asia around 30% and Sub-Saharan Africa 20%. The unequal power relations between men and women in the household and society continue to undermine uh, women's economic empowerment. In such cases, their ability to control income determines the amount of money to save and invest or spend on health and nutrition. It is generally diminished. Fifthly, Globally, men and women tend to be clustered in specific occupations and sectors, resulting in significant job segregation by gender. In most regions of the world, with the exception of South Asia, women are less likely than men to work in manufacturing, but more likely to work in services. The gender distribution in agriculture is mixed. Women are more likely to work in agriculture than men in the Middle East, North Africa and South Asia and equally likely in East Asia, the Pacific and Sub-Saharan Africa and less likely in other regions. The unpaid care and domestic work continues to be disproportionately done by women and girls.
Globally, women spend three times more time on unpaid care and domestic work than men in Asia and the Pacific and four times more in some other areas. Gender gap in unpaid care and domestic work tend to be higher in countries with poor infrastructure and less well-developed education and social protection systems. Gender gaps are also higher in countries with more discriminatory social institutions. Women's responsibilities with regard to care work and domestic work leave them time poor and limit their engagement in labor markets, reduce their productivity and increase gender gaps in labor force participation. Now let us look at the status of women in India. Coming to the first table which shows the participation of women in Indian labor force. It can be clearly seen that the participation of women in uh, labor force, in the Indian labor force has been declining continuously. While in 1972-73 it was around 33%, in 2017-18 it has reduced to uh, around 17-18%. to 18%. Then coming to the employment by sector for rural females, as can be seen from this graph, the concentration of women is more in low growth sectors like agriculture and it has remained the same over the period of years. Coming to employment by sector for urban females, you can see that the concentration of women in the service sector has been increasing for urban females over the period of time. India ranked 112th among 153 countries in the Global Gender Gap Index in 2020 and 140th in 2021, which has shown a, a remarkable distancing away from the uh, previous year's record of 112th position. Only 14.3% of science researchers in India are women and the country's ratio is worse than that of uh, several countries in West Asia. Coming to the gender gap in uh, labor force participation, the average wage received per day by regular employees uh, between the age of 15 to 59 as uh, shown in NSSO 68th round, uh, it shows that the female get lower wages in both rural areas and in urban areas as compared to males. While in rural areas, the wage rate for fem female was 201.56 rupees, uh, while that for men was 322.28 rupees. In urban areas, it was 366.15 for female and 469.87 for male. Now let us uh, discuss about women and the sustainable development goals. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals adopted by the world leaders in 2015 embody a roadmap for progress that is sustainable and leaves no one behind. Achieving gender equality and women's empowerment is integral to each of the 17 goals. Only by ensuring the rights of women and girls across the goals will we get to justice and inclusion. Economies work for all and sustaining our shared environment now and for future generations. The goal 5 of Sustainable Development Goals aims to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Gender equality is not only a fundamental human right but a necessary foundation for a peaceful, prosperous and sustainable world. There has been progress over the last, last decades in terms of more girls are going to school, fewer girls are forced into early marriage, more women are serving in parliament and uh, positions of leadership and laws are being uh, reformed to advance gender equality. However, despite these gains, there are several challenges which remain. Discriminatory laws and social norms remain pervasive. Women continue to be underrepresented at all levels of political leadership. And one in five women and girls between the ages of 15 and 49 report experiencing physical or sexual violence by an intimate partner within a 12 month period. So today we have discussed about the gender divide, 
and gender gap in economic participation of women. We also discuss the trends and evidences of economic participation of women. We discuss the drivers and constraints uh, which uh, towards the economic participation of women. We discuss the status of economic participation of women in India. And finally, we discussed about the sustainable development goals, which promotes gender equality and empowerment of women. Thank you.